So again, welcome to our workshop today on how to create video quizzes with Kaltura. And I think we can go ahead and just take a look at our agenda and then I'll start off with a demonstration for you. So I ran out of room on here, but we will actually just do a quick round of introductions um, after the slide. Um, and then I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to start demonstrating how to build a Kaltura video quiz um, from start to finish. And so some of those things that we're going to get into is we're going to look at the settings that you can customize, um, which means, you know, what kind of rules are in place for your video. Um, you can manipulate the introduction screen, which is nice because it gives um, a welcome message to anybody who's about to take your Kaltura video quiz. We'll look at the different types of quiz questions that you can embed. Um, and at that point, we'll come back to this uh, session right here in Blackboard Collaborate, and I'll see if there are any questions that I can field. And then um, we'll switch gears again. And once you've built your Kaltura video quiz, then at that point, we're going to look at how you can embed it within your Blackboard course. Um, I do have some other things so that I'd like to share with you after that. I've been beating on our Kaltura video quiz pretty hard, so I can tell you some of the best practices, some potential pitfalls that you're going to want to try to avoid. Um, I've already fallen in those potholes for you, so I, I can tell you a little bit about those. Um, just some good reminders, and then of course our formal Q&A wrap up. But um, at any point, if you have questions, just please feel free to type them in the chat, and we'll go from there. So hopefully you've found that little chat bubble that I mentioned. So again, just click on that purple thumbnail. Um, but let me know your name, um, either your discipline or what courses you're teaching. And I'd really like to know um, how you're using Kaltura. This lets me know a little bit about you. Are you recording lectures? Are you uploading existing videos? Maybe you're using the um, YouTube index feature. I know some of you may have your students recording their own video presentations. So um, I'm curious, let me know how you've been using Kaltura. So I'll give you a couple of minutes for that. Uh, it's like, do we have to type it in the chat or what? Type it in the chat or the microphone, whatever is your preference. Oh, okay. All right. So, Lynn, I see you posted. Great. Thank you. You're in public health and health education. Great. And so you're using Kaltura for students to upload their recorded presentations to the course discussion forum. I love that use. Um, if some of you have never done this before, when your students upload their own Kaltura videos to a discussion forum, then their peers can uh, watch the videos and respond as well. So it's very interactive. Great. Thank you. And Marcia, you're with the School of Public Health and you're using Kaltura for introductory videos. Um, you did have one to show in class, but you think you missed the step because it would not load. If that ever happens, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to help you with that. But that's a great way to get to know your students. I, I know particularly since we're still a lot of us kind of in this, you know, hybrid modality, um, gets your students out there so that they can recognize names and faces. So wonderful. Aruna, you are a recitation in general chemistry, but you've not used Kaltura yet. Okay, great. So um, you may have some questions about Kaltura videos in general. Um, today we're going to focus on the quiz, but um, this is going to be a you know just a, a great piece for if you want to do something kind of interactive with your videos. So I'm excited. Okay. 
on that note, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to switch to the demonstration piece of Kaltura. Um, at this point, I won't be able to see this uh, little chat box that we have going on here, but you know, please feel free to type any questions you may have. I can hear it when you're typing things, so I'll come back and revisit it um, periodically. Or if you're more comfortable with it, you can always turn on your microphone and you can feel free to interrupt me with any questions you may have. All right, so stop sharing and let's dive into the demonstration. Okay, I know that looks a little crazy, so we'll switch here. So when it comes to creating a Kaltura video quiz, I always tell people to go ahead and log into Blackboard and scroll all the way down here to Tools. And this is where you're going to find your full Kaltura My Media library. So the nice thing about the Kaltura interactive video quiz is that any video that you have in your Kaltura video library can be turned into a quiz. So this could be something that you have maybe recorded with the Kaltura capture tool. If you uploaded any of your existing videos, you could create um, a video quiz from that. You can even create an interactive video quiz from any of these YouTube um, videos that you've indexed here. Now, the one caveat to that is if you're using the YouTube videos, you're not really the owner of the YouTube videos. We're, we're borrowing it. So um, you cannot edit a YouTube video that is not your own. Um, and if the owner ever took down the uh, YouTube video, you would lose it in your library as well as any potential um, video quiz that you created from it. So I just want to put that out there. Um, but the one really nice piece about the interactive video quiz is that you do not lose your original video file. So what happens is it actually makes a copy of your video uh, and it puts a layer of the quiz over the top of it. So you'll actually end up with two entries. You'll have your original video file and then you'll have the quiz. Um, so I just wanna reassure you that you won't lose any of your existing work. So for today, I actually um, uploaded just a sample video. As you can see, it's not very long. It's 56 seconds. Um, but we're going to pretend that this is our uh, video that we want to turn into an interactive quiz. And so what you would do is you would go up here to the blue Add New button. And we're going to choose the video quiz. When this happens, it's going to ask you to select um, one of your your media samples here. So you, literally you can choose anything that's in your library. And so now we're ready to begin. The first thing that I like to do is I like to kind of customize the settings. And so I just go through this list here. So I'll start right at the top with details. Okay. So you can give it a name. I had created you know a dog sample video and it tells me that it's a quiz so this is really nice in your library um, I, I encourage you to make sure that you put the word quiz in there so you can differentiate which is which uh, which is a video versus which is your quiz and then it uh, by default has a show welcome page and so this is what your students will see before they start the video quiz and you can customize the message which I encourage you to do so one of the things that I want you to know about the interactive video quiz is that it's not designed uh, for people to pause it or to stop it and to resume it later. And so that can kind of cause confusion if people don't know that up front. Um, so I often like to tell people something like, this video is, you know, 15 minutes. Please watch it in one sitting. Um, that's a huge help to your students. They, they know how much time they're going to need to watch this video. Um, you know, you can even give them, a, maybe you want to give them a little bit extra time because it's a quiz. So maybe they need to, um, you know, add a couple minutes in there, you know, just so that they can respond. But um, either way, this is a really helpful message that I encourage you to convey. So, and again, you can you can customize it any way you like. 
All right, so that's just the first one. Um, I, I leave these all checked. I don't bother changing those. Um, and then we can get to score. So scoring is part of the quiz, you know, like how do we, how do we want to handle this? Um, and part of this is also going to be determined in Blackboard after we create the quiz. Um, but these are some of your options here. I strongly recommend that you allow multiple attempts. And the reason that I suggest this is because I'm trying to remove as many barriers for you and your students as possible. Um, inevitably, something will go wrong that's out of your control. So somebody could have their computer crash, the internet could go down, there's a power outage. Um, these are all things that you can't control. And if you only let your students have one attempt, then they're going to be emailing you at all hours saying that they can't take the video quiz. So I do allow um, multiple attempts. Um, you know, you can make it as many attempts kind of as you want. They said two to a hundred. There's no reason um, not to, to give them more. In my experience that students really just want to get through the quiz, you know, as quickly and efficiently as possible. They don't typically, if they're not required to take it more than once, um, they typically don't. So um, squiz, uh, quiz score to keep, you know, the, the latest attempt, it would be fine, or you could do the highest attempt, um, whichever you prefer. You have an option here um, if you don't want them to see their score right away, or you can just have it display their score if it's auto graded. Um, you can let them know, like, do you want to include, you know, answers? Will they be able to see the correct or incorrect answers? You know, like what they might have only gotten two out of 10 points, um, but do you want them to know why? Okay, so this video quiz is not nearly as robust as the quiz options that we have with Blackboard. Um, so this one is pretty primitive, but um, it still kind of gets the job done. And then we can move on to experience. So these are the rules that you can use for your video quiz. Um, do you want to allow uh, viewers to change their answer before submitting the quiz? Yes or no, that's up to you. Um, this one right here is probably the biggest one. Do you want to allow skipping? Um, if you want to make sure that your students have watched the quiz from start to finish uh, without fast forwarding, then I suggest that you say, do not allow skipping. Um, and no seeking forward. And that means that once they push play, um, it plays without them being able to manipulate the controls or the functions. So that's a very popular one. Um, so when you combine this with as many attempts as necessary, I, I think that you've um, eliminated a lot of barriers for your students. You are you know, mandating, hey, this is really important. I need you to watch this video from start to finish. Um, but you can push play as many times as you want. Um, every time they push play, they'll start right back at the beginning. Right? OK. So any questions on that so far? All right, I don't hear any pings in the chat, so I'll, I'll keep going. So at this point, now we're at the stage. Hey, Megan, you said that every time they, they press play, it, it starts from the beginning? Yes. Isn't it possible for them, like, you know, like when answering the questions, like to move forward at each, with each part of the video? So the way that this is set up right now, based on the rules that I set up, um, as they're playing the video, it's going to pause um, for the question. Once they answer the question and hit submit, then the video will move on um, right where they left off. Ah, okay, okay, it makes sense now. Yep, it, it makes sense. But Thank what you. it's doing is it's preventing them from just skipping to where they need to answer a question and fast forwarding. Okay, okay, it, it's, it makes sense. Okay, so, but now we're at the stage where we get to add the questions. And the one thing that I, I want to um, really highlight here is that Kaltura calls this an interactive video quiz. It is designed for you to insert questions as the video is playing. Um, what it's not set up to do is where you watch the video in its entirety and then you stack a bunch of questions at the end. 
So I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. Um, and again, my sample here is just a kind of a junk video clip of some puppies. Um, you know, it's 55 seconds long. Presumably you have far superior content for your courses, but um, for demonstration purposes, this works. Um, at this stage, what I can do is I can hit play on my video. All right, and I get to decide where I want to pause and add a question. Um, if I had a very long video and I wanted to, you know, fast forward, uh, and, and not have to play through the entire video, I could go down here and move this little um, cursor, you know, to wherever I want to um, add a question. So um, you have kind of the fast forwarding function as an instructor. Um, this is not uh, your fast forward button. This is kind of a micro zoom. So just to let you know about that, um, this is how you zoom in microscopically on, on a, a small segment of your video. So I, I typically actually don't even use that uh, tool, but um, this one down here would work well for your purposes. And so again, I can, I can push play, I can pause, and then whenever I'm ready to add a question, I'll go right here to this little plus button that appears in the middle of the screen. And I have some different options for questions. Um, I have multiple choice, true, false, um, and these two are auto graded, okay? Uh, there's a reflection point, which I think is a little deceiving. It's more about asking students to pause and consider and reflect, um, but it's not really a quiz question. Or you could use the other option down here. So I think there's really three primary options if you, if you want this as a graded exercise multiple choice, true, false, or you have an open-ended question, which is either like a short answer or an essay question. If you use the open-ended question, just be aware um, that you are gonna have to go through here and grade their responses um, as you would in a regular Blackboard quiz. Uh, true, false will auto-grade for you because we're going to designate the correct answer. So um, let me show you an example here of a multiple choice question. So this pops up and you have some different options here. First, you get to type your question. So OK. Um, you can do different things now. It, the nice part is the top one is always the correct answer, um, just which makes it easy um, for you as you're typing. But you can change this. Um, so we could say woods and then we can give some wrong answers here right like a we can give a i don't know But these are different options here. Um, and then you can do some things like this little, um, these little arrows up at the top here. This is your, um, it'll jumble it for you. So that's nice. And um, you also have this option right here. You can give a hint to your students if you want, that's optional. And you can click Save. And so here you see your timeline um, down here at the bottom. And here's your first quiz question. Now, I do emphasize this every single time. Um, the, if you get nothing else out of the Kaltura quiz for um, this workshop, you know, one tip to take away from this is to please space out your quiz questions. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could just be anywhere from five to 10 seconds. Um, but if you stack quiz questions on top of each other, um, Kaltura doesn't know which one to read off to your students, so it'll pick one. Um, and then the students will get to the end of the quiz and it'll say that it's incomplete because it 
Caltrain knows that there was a bunch of questions, um, but because they were all stacked on top of each other, it only picked one out of the group. So um, I do kind of consider that a little bit of a sneaky trick, but um, so we can go ahead, we can click play. See, now my cursor has moved. Um, it's further away from my first question. And so now I can insert another question. So I can add a question here. I could do true, false. Um, And you can even change the language on the true false a little bit if you want. Um, so you could do yes, no, or something like that. Um, so you, it, it just lets you move the cursor. You can. Oops, that's a very angry no. OK. And so there's our next question. And so you can keep on going, adding as many of these as you would like. Um, and you know, if you get tired of waiting for the, the video to progress, you can drag this little cursor along, right? Oh. You know, this could be your short answer or essay question. Um, and that's all there is to this one. There's nothing really um, else that you, you need to add to it um, because this is where your students would type their own, um, their own answer. So those are the three primary types of uh, quiz questions that you can grade. Again, the other one is a reflection point, um, which is Basically, you're just asking your students to pause and think critically, uh, but there would be nothing to grade here. So that's what this one looks like. All right. So again, you can add as many questions, um, I think, as you would like. The thing here is to always make sure that you um, space out your quiz questions, right? You cannot stack them on top of each other or it will result in errors. Um, and you need to insert questions while the video is still playing. So, you know, if you get all the way towards the end here, you know, be careful once you get to about this point um, because otherwise the video cuts off. And so you want to make sure that you get in your questions before the end of the video. So again, it is an interactive one. Um, you know, if you want to wait till the very end of the video, that's fine. But still, just remember to space out those questions. Um, you can see here, like my little boxes that indicate where there are questions, they don't overlap. Um, if they touch each other, you're, um, you're kind of in a danger zone, if that makes sense. And so once you're finished, you can, of course, do a preview. All right. And so this is exactly what your students would see. In this video, you'll be given a quiz. Good luck. This video is 15 minutes. Please watch it in one sitting. All questions must be answered. The quiz will be submitted at the end. OK. So that's exactly what your students see. They can watch the video. They cannot fast forward. We've disabled that. So where are the dogs walking? Right. So. And um, you know, again, it has, I think, what do we say, 270 characters here. I was just, you know, typing away. Um, so I mean, it can't go on forever and ever. But um, and this is kind of your short answer essay question answer. As a student, I'm 
I tried to move forward. Seeking was disabled on this video. Okay, so that's what happens if your students try. They, they are obligated to continue watching the video um, from start to finish. Okay, so that was my um, preview there. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I don't see any other functions really. Um, it, it's not a super robust quiz. Um, it's just trying to make sure that people are engaged when they're watching their videos. So let me pop back into our session and I'll see if I can answer any questions. Okay. So hey, questions, Megan. thoughts? Yes. Uh, you said that we we can't we can't edit that video when it's a YouTube. Correct. So um, let me, Marshall, I'll be with you in just one second. I see your hand up too. So let me um, demonstrate to you what I, I mean by that. So. Oh, okay. Um, let me. Maybe. We're gonna, sorry about that. Kind of froze up for a second there. Okay. So we're gonna be done. Cancel. Um, I'm gonna delete that. All right, now we're done. So. At this stage, I think I'm actually just going to exit out of here um, and re-enter. So this is uh, processing right now, so it'll be ready probably in just a couple of minutes. Um, so to answer your question, there are different things that we can do in Kaltura to add um, media. And so one of them is called um, the YouTube index, or at least that's what everyone calls it, I think, in my department. So we can add a video to our Kaltura library. And the benefit to doing this is that it strips away any type of commercial or advertisement that you usually stumble across when you are in YouTube. So um, for instance, I already have this uh, tab open here. Let's say I wanted this TED Talk video, right? So you can see here that I'm, I've got an ad and then there's another one coming up. So what we can do is we'll just take the URL, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put it here, okay. and okay, here it is. Here's the video that I am actually adding to my library, and notice it goes straight to the video. There's no more of those commercials. So that's kind of the beauty of borrowing a YouTube video. Um, so I saved it. Now I'm going to go back to my library, and here's the video. Um, I can use it. I, I can embed it in my course. I can even make a copy of this and turn it into the quiz, just like I did with that dog video. Um, but the difference is I never created this YouTube video, right? This is a TED Talks video. So um, I'm not able to do things like I can't crop the video. I can't change their captions because I'm not the owner. So um, there's a little bit more limited uh, functionality with these videos, um, but it, it would still serve its purpose if you wanted this you know, nine minute and one second video to turn it into a quiz. That makes sense. Did that sense. answer your question? Yeah. Yep, okay. that makes total sense. Total sense. Thank you so much. Sure. And so let me hop back in here. Maybe. Okay. And uh, Marsha, I think you had your hand up. Can I answer a question yeah. for you? Yeah. Um, the question, and I forgot what you said. Can they, in that simple quiz, can they? They can't go forward, but can they back up? Um. So that's a good question. We can. We can try it. Um, I, I forgot. Let me see. That's a good question. It's been a while since I played with that functionality. Um, I mean, I can see not having them skip forward. 
because sometimes we can't do that when we have to take our required <laughs> stuff. That sure, sure. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, put they back up if they go, oh, shoot, I, I missed, there was a question there, I missed it, and they back up. Let's find out. Um, all right, so there's my video quiz. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to the launch editor here. Um, I want to do the preview, make sure that I'm seeing exactly what my students see. Can I? Yes. So I can go backward. Okay. So you don't have to make that a specific requirement to go backward. That's kind of a embedded. They it's a given. Yes. Do that. It's a given. I kind of thought that was the case, but I, I didn't want to promise you that. I'd rather test that and, <laughs> you know, demonstrate it for you. But yeah, yeah that's a great question. Um, so it's really just the fast forwarding that you can disable. Um, and then but the rewind is is, okay. Yeah, um, had to do with the YouTube. You just create those quizzes the same way mm -hmm. you did for the short one, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. And so let's see. I'm going to hop back in here, stop sharing. Um, you know what? I'm going to... I do want to switch gears here. I've got a question for you. So I'm going to put a poll up on the board here for just a second. Give me one moment while I type this up. Um, Okay, so you should see a poll in the middle of the screen here. Um, I'm just curious what type of Blackboard course um, do each of you use, whether you use Blackboard Original or Blackboard Ultra. And you can just make your selection there. Um, because at this stage, now that we've created a quiz, I can show you um, different ways that you can embed it in your course. So, okay, great. I, it looks like we have, um, you know, some original, some ultra, not sure. Okay, so that's great. I'll, I'll demonstrate both course views for you and I'll show you what this looks like. So once you've created your video quiz at this point, now we get to put it inside your Blackboard course. And there are two different ways that you can insert this into your course. And what that means is you get to decide, is this an ungraded activity or do I want it to count for points? And so I will show you what that looks like. So um, we can just, all righty, we can hop out of there. And I'm going to share my screen again. OK. All right, so at this point, now we're gonna go into one of our classes. So I'm just going to use one of my um, sandbox courses. This is kind of a dummy course, so I'm sure it looks cluttered and messy. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, so we'll just start with the original course view. And if you're not sure which course view you use, if you ever see a course like this where it has kind of this gray uh, or charcoal gray, um, menu going down the side, this means that you're in the original course view. So we can go to our content here. And I don't know, I'm just going to pick a week, hope it doesn't have too much in it. So we'll try week seven. Okay, yeah, so I have some junk in here. But um, at this point, now I get to embed the quiz. And so I have two options here. So I'm going to go over here to build content. And I have two different things that I can do. If I want to embed my quiz, you know, I want my students to engage with it, to answer those questions, but I really don't care if it counts for points in my course, then I'm gonna go right over here um, and I'm gonna go to Kaltura Video. 
And now it asks me to pick any of my Kaltura videos that I want to put in my course. So here it is. Here's my dog sample video quiz. I can embed that. Right. So, and it went all the way down here to the bottom. So when students click on this link, it'll take them, it makes it nice and big, full screen. It takes them to the quiz. Um, they're still gonna get that message, you know, please make sure that you um, watch this in one sitting. It's going to take you 15 minutes, you know, that type of a thing. But um, it's still a quiz, it's still interactive, but because we chose to embed it as a Kaltura video, there are no points um, attributed to this activity. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go back. All right, and you know what? I'm gonna delete that just so I don't confuse myself. Okay, versus. If you did this and you said, you know what, this is an assignment, my students need to watch this video, they need to take the quiz, it's going to count for points in the course. Um, at that point, you're still going to go up here to where it says build content, and we're just going to scroll a little bit further down. Um, I don't know why these aren't exactly in alphabetical order, but we're going to look for Keltra video quiz. Same thing, it takes me back to my Kaltura library, um, and this time I'm going to choose the quiz again. Okay, so not a heck of a lot of a difference, but the, diff but the big part here is that now it has created a column in my grade center, and I can decide how many points it's worth. So um, at that point, I can click this little drop down menu here, and I can click um, edit, and it asked me how many points possible. Now this is the part where I keep telling everybody, you know, Kaltura is a little bit primitive. If you assign a point value to this quiz, um, it, it, all the questions are gonna be worth the same amount of points. So if I had, you know, three questions and um, I want them worth two points a piece, you know, then I can do six points. Um, but it won't let me pick and choose like, which question is worth more points. Um, it, it just doesn't have that functionality. So I, I do want to make you aware of that. You can establish a total point value for the assessment, and what it's going to do is it's going to evenly distribute the points for the number of questions that you embedded in your quiz. Um, and you have different options here. You can give it a due date if you want. Of course, make it visible to your students. Um, if you want an additional description, you can. Uh, that's up to you. And um, just click Submit. Now, when you go to grade your uh, videos, so um, you can go to the Grade Center. I do apologize, I know this thing is super cluttered. Um, I'm sure it's all the way at the end. There it is. And there's my uh, dog sample video quiz. If you do multiple choice and true false questions, it will auto grade for you. If you choose the um, short answer of that essay question, um, it will not auto grade for you. And so you're responsible for entering the score here in your uh, in your Blackboard Grade Center. However, you will not see what they wrote through the Blackboard Grade Center. Instead, uh, what you would have to do is you will have to go back uh, to Tools here. You're going to have to go to Kaltura My Media, and you'll have to look at your student submissions. And so I know nobody's actually taken this quiz, but um, if we click on it, we can go right there. Um, and we have to go to analytics. Okay. And of course, I just did this. Nobody has taken this, so it's not like the greatest um, example here, but it'll tell you who the quiz users are, um, and, and you can see what they wrote. So that is the downside of using the essay question. Their answers are not recorded in Blackboard, and so you kind of end up toggling back and forth between your Kaltura Media Library to view what they wrote um, and your grade center. So I just want to make you kind of aware of that. So 
Okay, so that was what we would do for the Blackboard Original courses. Now I know we have some Ultra users, so I want to address that as well. Um, let, me, let me go to my Ultra Sandbox here. So if you were wondering which course view you are, this is what a Blackboard Ultra course looks like. So this is kind of what we'll all be moving to in the future. Um, so this is an Ultra classroom. So again, we have those two same options for how we want to um, embed our, our video quiz. If you had uh, modules or folders, weekly folders, you could put your video in there. Otherwise, you can just add it wherever. Um, so I'll click that little, I'll hover my mouse, I'll click the plus button. Um, and then it gives me some different options. For ultra users, you need to look for this shopping cart where it says um, content market. And from here, we have our two different options, right? Um, here we go. So if I want to embed it just again as an activity, no points are awarded to my students for watching this video and completing the quiz, I would embed it as a Kaltura video. If I want them to have points associated with completing this video quiz, I'll go right over here and I'll do the Kaltura video quiz. Um, And so there it is. Okay. And oops, let's see. Did I go too far? I did. Um, same thing though. I, I can edit this. Um, I can give it a due date. Um, I can give it um, total points. go and I would click save. So these are the two different ways that we can embed our Kaltura video quiz just based on your personal needs and I know we're getting a little light on time here so I do want to come back to um... yes Lynn go ahead. Um, I use Ultra and is there an option I didn't see um, for the number of, te of temps in the settings within the quiz or is that something you set up when you do the Kaltura video quiz setup? That's you, something you do when you're building the quiz itself. Okay. So that was one of the, the first settings, like how many attempts. And they give you, if you authorize multiple attempts, it gives you anywhere between two to a hundred. Okay. But Just wanted question. to make sure like there wasn't an attempts when you build it and then another opportunity to make different attempts in the settings. No. Then. Okay. But that would be messy, so I'm glad they don't do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And... All right, so I, I do want to go over just a couple of pointers and things that I have for you um, in regards to building these quizzes. Um, make sure if you want to edit your video, do so before you turn it into a quiz. Um, I made the mistake of turning it into a quiz and then I thought I could go back and crap out a section. I was wrong. You cannot do that. So um, make sure that you edit your video first. Then, if you do want to edit your captions, do that after you've edited your video. So it's kind of three steps. Edit the video if you want, you know, if you need to crop off the ends or, you know, if you sneezed in the middle of your, of your lecture, you know, you want to crop that out, go for it. Um, next, if you want to adjust your captions, uh, because all Kaltura videos are auto-captioned, um, you can make that change. And then finally, once you've made both of those changes, you're now at the place where you can create a video quiz. Um, I've tried doing it in different sequence of orders um, and it doesn't save your changes. So that's why I, I would tell you to do it in that, that series. Um, again, if you get nothing else out of this uh, workshop, uh, please space out your quiz questions. If you put them too close together, um, it results in nothing but errors. If you try to stockpile your questions at the end of the video quiz, um, that also is a problem. We, we know that sometimes people want to stop videos um, and come back to them later with the video quiz. Um, it's not a good idea. So try to use that intro message to encourage students to complete their quiz in one sitting. Um, 
And then we do try to tell people maybe use Google Chrome browsers um, if possible, sometimes Safari, um, things like that kind of get into a snarl with Kaltura. So um, Google Chrome is a you know kind of ideal for it, but um, again, Firefox would work well as well. So you've got some different options there. And then the, the potholes that I call them, or the pitfalls, whatever you would like to call them. Um, these are the snags that I've run into for you, so I can try to tell you to avoid them. Um, pausing and resuming the video quiz um, isn't going to work well for your students. Um, for you, editing or altering after you've already made the video quiz, it won't save your changes. So, um, or after students have begun participating. That, that becomes an issue. Um, hotspots do not work in video quizzes. If you're not sure what a hotspot is, it's not the same thing as a mobile hotspot. Um, a hotspot is where sometimes you can um, insert, you know, a link to another outside website so people can go um, check something out at a different website and return to the video. Those are disabled in video quizzes. So um, if you were planning on using one of those, I'm sorry to disappoint you, um, those are not a functionality. And of course, try not to post all of your questions at the end of the video. So um, it does need to be playing while you insert those questions. Yes, Lynn. Was there a number of seconds that the students had on each quiz question? Is that something we set up or the video, that, that was something we set up when you said spacing it out, right? Um, well, I just meant spacing it out in terms of like, how far apart those quiz questions, um, you know, appear in the video itself. Um, but as far as your students, you know, how long they have to respond to a quiz question, that isn't something that we're able to control. Um, they have kind of indefinitely. Oh, okay. As long as so when they answer, then they, it moves it forward. Yes. Okay, so once no. they hit submit, it moves it forward. Okay, thanks. Um, but, you know, if you were asking like, oh, do they have three minutes to, to come up with an answer or two, um, that, that's not actually a functionality within Kaltura. But yeah, as soon as they hit submit, then the, the video resumes. Um, so these are just kind of my additional reminders that I have for you. Um, if you want your students to receive um, points for the quiz, then remember to embed it as a Kaltura quiz in Blackboard. If you just want them to enjoy the, the interactive activity, no points associated, then um, embed it as a Kaltura video. You get to assign, um, pardon me, you get to assign your point values in Blackboard, but not in Kaltura. All quiz questions get the same point values. That's not something that we're able to manipulate. And a graded quiz will automatically update in the Blackboard Grade Center and Gradebook. But if you want to see what your students wrote, um, you can only view student responses in Kaltura, not in Blackboard. So. I know that was a little bit quick. We've got about 10 minutes. So um, again, I can go back, I can show you um, how to find those student responses or I can keep answering questions. Uh, Marcia, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm guessing that this answer might be no, but does Kaltura work at all with those canopy videos from the NIU library? Could you um, do a quiz in that? Well, you know, I haven't actually played with those videos. Um, so the answer to that is, can you download the Canopy videos? Um, I embed them right in Blackboard. So they watch it, you know, right through their Black, through the Blackboard course so they don't have to go to another site. So I don't know if that's the same. So, um, you know, that's something I'll have to take a look at because I've never actually um, played with those videos. I'm happy to look that up for you. The the only condition for this is that we need to get the video into your Kaltura library um, yeah. to make it into a quiz. So presumably, if those Canopy videos are available for download, then yes, absolutely, um, you can do that. Now, if they have it set up where you can only play the video on their website, but no downloads are accessible, um, then I would say no. But 
So yeah, I don't know the difference between embedding and download. I don't think embedding is the same as download, right? No, no. So um, download would mean like you can save the video to your personal device oh, so that you can yeah, okay. kind of watch it whenever mm -hmm. you want. So um, don't know that. <laughs> but let me know, um, you know what, just shoot me an email, let me know which video you're looking at, and I'll be happy to tell you if okay. we can maybe turn that into a, a quiz for you. Okay. So that's an excellent question. Lynn. Um, in the settings, when you were setting up the quiz, there was something about including the answers or like show the answer right away. Um, mm -hmm. In an effort to reduce cheating and the students taking pictures or screenshots, um, I'm wondering if it's not, I'm kind of caught between like, I want them to learn from the mistakes made, but also I don't want cheating happening. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I would say like, no, I don't want to show the answers, but maybe at the end of the module, I'll have the entire quiz available. I, I don't know if you know any other, or have any other thoughts or best practices on that. Sure, you know, we get that question a lot too. Um, so, you know, you might say no, and then um, just post the, the quiz uh, questions and answers in a separate document in Blackboard that you can release after everyone's watched the video. Uh, that might be a simple way around it. Um, sometimes Kaltura quizzes don't work uh, as people hope or anticipate. And so something else that you can do with your um, quiz, what we've seen people do if they want additional quiz functionality, um, is they might turn their, uh, their recording into a Kaltura video quiz. They'll disable you know, the fast forwarding or no seeking forward. Um, and they might put one question getting close to the end and they'll say, you know, I certify that I watched this video. So they have to say yes. Um, and then they'll use conditional availability or adaptive release rules um, so that once they, they finally get to the end of the video, they certified that they watched it, it unlocks um, a Blackboard quiz. And the Blackboard quiz has a lot more functionality. So you could have those things like where, you know, you can have your questions are worth different amount of points you know you can do different things with when are the correct answers displayed and things of that nature so that's also another option now is that that sounds a little complicated is are there directions for how to set that up <laughs> I, um yeah, and there are definitely some options for that. And what I would probably recommend is um, contact me. You know, I can set okay. up just a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you. We'll just take, it would take no more than an hour. It might okay. just take a couple of minutes and we would set it up in your Blackboard course together. All right, that's, I like that concept of like, I've, I've gone through this presentation. Mm -hmm. I, I have a class of 100 students, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best ways to make sure they learn something without being too like militant, but um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We'll you know, that. you put that content in there, you want them to watch it, you yeah. know. Um, so, so yeah, there are different things that we can do. Um, like I said, the, unfortunately, the Kaltura quiz, it, it's pretty um, simple. It's pretty basic. There's not a lot of functionality to it. It might work for you. It might not. Um, so if it doesn't, we can use it in combination with a separate quiz in your Blackboard course. And I, I'm more than happy to work with you to set that up. All right. Sounds good. So, all right. And let's see. We do also have a web page that I wanted to let you know about. Um, and so you can see this kind of up on the screen there. It's niu.edu backslash Keltra. And so this just has all sorts of different um, guides on there. It'll tell you step by step how to add your media or, you know, how to, um, there's a guide that you can share with your students so that it shows students how to add their media so you're not responsible for training them how to use Kaltura. There's an FAQ section about, you know, kind of commonly asked questions or maybe troubleshooting guides. Um, so that's definitely a, a website you might want to keep um, handy. And following this recording, I will be sure to go ahead and send you um, a link of our session today, as well as this. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email me directly, or you can ask me if there's some resources you're looking for. Uh, 
And of course, you know, one-on-one -on -one consultations, either you can email me directly or you can just make an appointment with anybody who's available in our CIDL department. And, you know, lots of ways to reach out. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll stop the recording. I know we're getting down to about two minutes, but I can demonstrate more, I can answer questions. So please let me know uh, what I can help you with.